We got our Subaru at Capital Subaru in Salem. But did you get a tree? What tree? Ah, find out more next on Garden Time. So the tree that Judy is talking about is actually a really great event happening at Subaru dealers everywhere. If you buy a new Subaru within the month of March, they will donate a tree and plant it in one of 20 different places around the U.S. For more information, you can always go to Gardentime.tv. Coming up at the show today, we'll be talking about hybridizing tulips and about one special tulip. We're also going to be showing you how you can divide your hostas. But first, pruning roses. Well, I'm standing here with Ben out at Heirloom Roses on a very, very breezy spring day, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yes, it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit of blistery. It here. is indeed, and we're going to be talking about, about a new acronym that you guys have for pruning roses. Now, the, 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 the basics are the same still, but this is just mm -hmm. to help people remember. Yeah, so we, we broke the, the, the pruning into five basic steps with the acronym PRUNE, P-R-U-N-E. Uh, the first one being P, prepare the plant. Okay. And we'll demonstrate all of this. Sure. R is remove all deadwood crossing canes and disease. Okay. U is understand your plant. What is what type of rose is it, and what are you planning on that rose doing? N is nothing left behind. Clean up everything. Yeah. It, it'll eliminate disease. And then E is enjoy your plant all summer. Because it's a lot of work if you're not going to do that one, huh? <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> so why don't we just jump in and let's start with the uh, the, the first one, the P. All right. So uh, P is prepare your plant. We're going to go through and we're going to cut off all the canes at about 30 inches. That allows us to see what's going on with the rose and to safely work without getting things in our eyes. So you're just really basically cleaning out so that it's more accessible for you to get in there and really get the stuff that you want to take out. Really, it's just cut every cane off at 30 inches. Okay. Uh, it, it, it just gives you an easy spot to start and uh, a safer place to work. Okay, now we've taken a couple minutes and you are just about done with the first step, right? We've got the plant leveled down to an e even uniform height at about 30 inches. Okay. And now we can really see what's going on inside the plant. So that takes us to the, the next letter, R. R. So we're going to remove all disease, deadwood, and crossing canes. And as you can see in here, there's some disease yep. happening right in here. Uh, and it's an old cane. You can see some rot here. And you can see a lot of places where the canes are crossing and they're going to wear Certainly. and uh, cause weak spots, particularly right here. Oh, yeah. These that's two a canes are just going to rub together in the wind. So we want to go ahead and take those out. In fact, you can already see, if I can move these, you can see where the scabbing has already taken place right from there, last year. Right yeah. there. Yes. And you want to remove that kind of stuff. Yes. Okay. Yes. So we'll go through the whole plant and just start taking pieces out. Perfect. Uh, I'm going to keep using my long handled pruners. It's a safe way to reach inside the rose yeah, without it getting, is. <laughs> getting uh, poked. Now, you're going to see me take out some big canes in here. That's really going to scare people. Uh, I think people are, are afraid of taking out big canes, but you really need to promote the newer growth coming yes. up, and it's going to pre be a healthier plant that uh, will bloom for years. So, Ben, what, you know, what about the center part of the plant? We Generally, we try to keep that open, don't we? Yes, you want to open it up to promote airflow okay. and to keep the canes from fighting each other and rubbing. Yeah. So, as you can see, there's a major cane right here in the middle. There it's is. a pretty big part of the plant. Uh, but it's right in the center and it's going to cause problems. So we're going to go ahead and cut that whole thing and take it out. And so, you know, you had mentioned that people kind of get, you know, nervous about taking out big canes, but mm -hmm. they're, you know, roses are very good at re-sending out big canes again. So this yes. is really only going to help them do that. Yes, you know, roses need to be pruned back to promote new yes. growth. Uh, and taking out these big canes is going to create room for these newer canes to come up and, and, and provide beautiful blooms. Okay, well, let's finish up that second letter. All right. A crossing cane right here, and I'm going to take this one out right here. And these two canes are going in the same direction and are fighting. This also has some disease on it down here at the bottom. Now again, this is a really big cane, but I'm going to go ahead and cut this whole thing off wow, right here yeah. at the bottom. Um, this one and this cane are fighting each other for space and crossing, so I need to make a decision. 
Um, which one do I want to keep? And that takes us into the you portion of this, understanding the plant. Okay. Okay. Now, I have a path along here that we're standing on, and yes. I really don't want this to come out. This is a lot of thorns on it, and it's going to poke people. This one's a little closer to the inside and still has some good healthy growth on it. So I'm going to take out this larger cane right here. And you know, we had already cut off probably, what, two feet mm -hmm. from this. So yeah, that would clearly mm -hmm. be the wiser choice. Yes. So again, another large cane coming out. And part of the thing about knowing the plant is that, you know, you would know that this is a shrub rose. Those tend to quite often get big anyway. Mm -hmm. So if you know that about it, mm -hmm. then you can make a wise decision in the pruning. Mm -hmm. And another portion of this too, is if you have a rose that's against your house, you really want to kind of shape it away from your house so you don't have things rubbing against yeah. your siding and things yeah. too. So just something else to consider. So Ben, let's do a few more cuts on this one and then we'll go to the next step. Great. So Ben, now this is drastically different than what was started with, and I just wanted to remind us too that you cut about a quarter inch above those buds, don't you? Yeah, a nice kind of an angled cut to keep the water off, sure. and it'll heal well that way, about a quarter inch above the bud. Okay, now, moving on to in. Nothing left behind. All right. We want to clean up all of our mess around. Um, on a lot of rose bushes, you'll have, have leaves and stuff in the inside. Yeah. Those are going to harbor spores that are going to create problems later on this spring. Uh, your black spot and mildews and things will come out of those. So we want to go ahead and clean up the whole plant. And Get we're all throwing... The, all the broken canes uh -huh. and loose leaves out and rake it clean. And we're throwing all of this stuff on a thing called leaf hopper, right? Yeah, you know, this is a great product that my wife and I use in our own home and we started using more here at the nursery. It allows you to throw all of these sharp canes onto something that can easily be carried without poking and they slide right off into your oh, garbage nice. or into your trailer, whatever it might be. Now, when you're raking like this, you want to be careful about buds at the bottom. There will sure. be a new basal break coming, and you want to gently rake around the base of the rows so that you're not breaking off any new growth that's going to help you out this year. And really, one of the easiest things to do to keep from diseases from getting around your roses is cleaning them up like that. That's right. That's right. And then, of course, as you've said before to us, remember not to compost these clippings and leaves because that'll add the disease into your compost. That's right. We, th we throw them all the way away. You, you, you put them in the trash and, 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 and get them off your property. Excellent. So now, Ben, we're to E, which is the, the final step. And what mm -hmm. is that? That's E. Enjoy your rose all summer. You have a nice. great start to a healthy, happy rose. Yeah. Enjoy the blooms. Now, you, uh, you are giving classes, right? Yes, so we have a Saturday Rose Academy on various topics of rose care. Okay, you know, for more information, you can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website, and you'll also be able to get this information and print it off at home for yourself and share with your friends. Ben, always a pleasure. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you very much. Locally grown, fresh from the farm, stylish and sustainable, your dream yard starts at Al's Garden Center. Brighten up your outdoor spaces with colorful, easy to grow pansies, now on sale for only 79 cents each. We've brought a huge variety in from the farm where we grow all of our plants with care so you get the brightest, healthiest pansies available. Many colors to choose from and they're on sale now. Al's Garden Centers in Woodburn, Sherwood and Gresham. Your garden is only as good as the ingredients you use. That's where Black Gold can help. Black Gold Seedling Mix is formulated for successful seed germination and strong seedling growth. Black Gold Seedling Mix is organic and OMRI listed, so you can start this year's organic garden outright. Look for Black Gold at your local garden center or go online to blackgold.bz. Black Gold, all the riches of the earth. Since 1937, our family has been deeply rooted in the Northwest nursery industry. Our love of plants goes back four generations. To this day, Garland Nursery inspires to bring you the very best variety of plants, top quality garden supplies, and all the pieces you need to create a beautiful and bountiful garden. Garland Nursery, inspiring beautiful and bountiful gardens. So I am out in the fields at Wooden Shoe Tulip Fields and I am here with Leo Burby and you are a tulip hybridizer and you actually are here all the way from Holland, aren't you? Yes, I am. Yes. So tell me a little mm -hmm. bit about the hybridization of tulips because it's a huge industry worldwide. 
all the old yes the tulip uh, the tulips grow from in in holland it's about 40,000 acres of tulips grown in holland and every year we have to come up with new varieties new 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 kinds new colors just to get the uh, the enthusiasm for bulbs going so leo give me a little bit of information on how, how does one go about hybridizing new varieties of tulips well to start out with you have a certain variety and then well, you take some pollen from one variety and you put it on the stamen of another one. And then you wait about four months and then you see the seeds developing. Uh -huh. And then you take out the seeds, you plant it, and then it takes five to seven years before you see the first flower coming out of it. So it really is. It's an investment of, of time it, and money to make this happen. It's a long time investment and you have to do it really every year. We make a selection of about 500 seedlings <laughs> and then from those seedlings we start, start to eliminate the varieties and see which ones would be possible for the future market because you're looking into the future. So Leo, then what is it though when you, when you see a group of, of, of the seeds begin and, and seven years, five years, whatever, you see them bloom, what are you looking for that says this is a tulip we're going to go forward with now? Well, it has to be different. It has to have a certain shape, a certain color, if it's a vibrant color or if it's an early flowering variety, or a mid-season or a late-season variety. And then we have to know the whole color scope of the tulips in order to make the right selection. And I would think that a lot of them, they're a big cut flower market too, so you would also want to know that they have, they're a good cut flower. Yes, but that's something we don't know after five years, we don't know that, yeah. because the first selection is still the color, and then you start multiplying from that color, and during that, further process which takes about 10 years oh my goodness you really start to, to look at the possibilities if it's a good garden variety or a good forcing variety well now you might be wondering william why do you have a handful of tulips because it is such a delight for me to tell you all that this tulip is a new tulip and it is named garden time so judy has the beautiful poster here with us and I, you have a bottle there of, of water. What, what is it that you're going to do here? Well, what we do like to do is baptize this tulip garden time. <laughs> That's adorable. You see, on this beautiful day in March, the sun is shining, and we would like to baptize this tulip by the name of garden time. <laughs> that you is see? Real. And we do hope that this tulip will bring a lot of joy to the people in the, their gardens for a long time to come. Now, I bet you're just itching to get some of these tulips, and you can do that. You can go to gardentime.tv. We can click you over to the website, both here and at his business in Holland, where you can get those. They'll come in. Now, remember, you're not going to see them until next spring because you have to plant them this fall, but then you can have garden time in your own garden every day through springtime. Thank you all so much for being here, and happy times with Garden Times. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. I've been a Capital Subaru customer for 15 years and one of the main reasons is because they treat me well and I want to shop local. The service department is excellent and I always feel like I'm taken care of here. In fact, they call me now even after I've driven off the lot to remind me to come in and get my car washed. That service. One of the reasons why I like coming to Capital Subaru, actually, they have this the dog area. And I can just walk my dog around the whole area and we can enjoy the outside. I got it my way on the parkway. Over the 30 years that our family has been in the nursery industry, we've learned that anyone can supply a customer with plants and garden supplies. But it's supplying those plants and supplies backed by a knowledgeable staff that can transform a garden and take it from ordinary to extraordinary. That's what we do at Sagawa Nursery. Why be ordinary when you can be extraordinary? Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. If you build it, build it right. Build it to last. Don't just build it for yourself. Build it for the next generation. Build it with par lumber. And keep building the great Northwest. At French Prairie Perennials, we take pride in being different. From our rare, unique, and unusual plant material and handcrafted garden art to our visual scaping program, we can help you create an outdoor living space as unique as you are. 
Our gift shop has home and garden decor and gifts for all occasions. Visit our store in the heart of Oregon wine country, French Prairie Perennials, Dundee, Oregon. Outdoor living, elevated. Well, on this sunny spring day, I'm with Thomas from Seabright Gardens. And Thomas, we're all out in our gardens. We're so excited about doing things. And so we're going to be talking about dividing hostas. And is it really a good time right now? Yeah, it actually is still a good time, but we want to do it fairly quickly because things are moving on really fast. Ah, so, so really, we want to look at them like this and not like this? Yeah, yeah. When they, when they get like this, this one over here by Stephanie, um, it's... Uh, a little bit too far along. It's unfurled its leaves already. So if we cut into that now and try and split it, it's going to go into a really bad wilt. So mm. that's a little bit too far. We'd have to wait about another month for the leaves to harden off on that before we split it. Okay. But if they're like this one, if you want to hold that one over there, Stephanie, and point, point towards the camera. And we have this great assistant Stephanie here with us. Yes. And uh, you can, she can see there in the center where the, the center has died out. That tells you that's a good sign when the hosta needs to be divided when the center starts to die out like that. So, uh, and this is, this is about as far along as you want it to be. The leaves haven't started to unfurl, so you can still divide that one. And it's kind of nice when they're poking up, because then you know where to make cuts, and maybe you don't sacrifice some that maybe it, would be viable. Exactly, yeah, it's really easy. And now we've got these two here in front of us. This is a good example of ones that are getting really heavily overgrown in the pots, sure. and you can see the roots of, so we've taken them out, and... Uh, so where do you begin? That's well, a big clump. We want to pull the, pull the roots apart a little bit first, okay. like this. Shake the dirt a little bit. And there's really nothing in the center that's funny. It's all no, really growing on the ex end. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And there's a bit of an open, uh, a bit of a spot right here. So we'll take our knife and just stick it in. And you want to just have a clean, sharp knife? Yes, a, a really nice, sharp knife. And this is where some Crackle. strength in your. <laughs> oh, good girl. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is where strength in your uh, wrists come in. Oh, so just pull. You're not really pull. hurting it. No, no. Okay. You're just pulling the roots apart that are tangled. Okay. And then you can see there's. So it's better than cutting it. It's kind of the yeah. And I, what I, I try to do is I try to cut from the bottom, not through the top, so you mm -hmm. don't get the divisions. Like stick it in underneath like this, okay. and it'll make a weak spot underneath the crown, and then you can pull oh, it apart. Oh sure. So you can see we haven't sliced through any of the crowns. No, look at that. All we've done is uh, pulled and untangled the roots. Because I think we sometimes feel bad about that. Yeah, so yeah. If, if you take it, if you take them like this, right, then it, you you risk sacrificing the crowns. But if you put it in at the side and go under, mm -hmm. then make it weak. Yeah, it cracks then, naturally. Yeah, and then pull it apart. Well, that one did, that one actually well, that tore anyways. Too, but, but that happens. Yeah. So, but we can make lots of divisions, as you can see. And really, you can put them in other parts of the garden. You can oh, yeah. share them with friends exactly. or family. And each one will make a division. But if you're splitting it down just for yourself in the garden, mm -hmm. well, this is a good size. We can lay them over here, and Stephanie can kind of count, see how many that we come up with. So do you want a couple in a new clump? So then you yeah. have something in the garden to show. Yeah, like two or three. And like even this one where we've damaged, mm -hmm. like this right here, there's a good chance that will recover. But, you know, only if you're desperate. You're desperate. desperate. <laughs> yeah, you want the most you know, viable ones, I'd, sure. I'd go ahead and probably take it off of there. And then you've got a nice double division. And then when you go to replant them, what should we be doing? Uh, when you go to replant, just go ahead and uh, plant them about, about the depth. So it's a little bit below, okay. below here. Put a little bit of compost and stuff in the soil and mix in the ground and uh, just stick them in. They're pretty easy. Yeah. So just, just water, water them, them, them in. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll have another beautiful house to more in your garden to yes. share. Yes, exactly. You got lots of sarah so leaves. You can see over here in front of Stephanie. There's lots. You got lots now. We had one. We've got, what have we got, Stephanie? Six? Six. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Thomas, I have houses in my garden that need division. So, what should I be doing then? Uh, there's two different things you can do it, depending on how many divisions you want. Uh, you can take a shovel and you can just be fairly rough and slice in and wedge a piece out, mm. which is what most people would probably do. If you want to be more gentle, you can dig the whole clump, which could be, you know, if you've got <laughs> giant sizable, hostas, sure. you can be dealing with, the, you know, a, a massive thing like this, like root balling a tree. Mm -hmm. So unless you're wanting to move it or divide it down severely, just take a shovel and chop through the center of it or off to the side and and pry a piece off and that will work fine too. Yeah, and it's kind of nice because then you leave a place because you probably love yes, it right there. Yes, yes, But it'll be even healthier this year. Yeah, and you can just fill in the spot where you took it out with compost and mm -hmm. it'll be nice and the new roots will go right back into it and it'll fill in very quickly. Ah, so. sounds easy too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
Well, you know, if you have any other questions or you want to come out to Seabright Gardens, you can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to our website and you have so many beautiful things here. More than hostas, we have epimediums, ferns, all kinds of beautiful things. Thanks so much, Thomas. Thank you, Judy. And thanks, Stephanie. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery, where spring is our favorite time of year. It's the time to prepare your garden for planting. We invite you to get a jump on spring with our huge selection. Let Portland Nursery's staff of professionals help with groceries you can grow. We've got the seeds, veggie starts, and expertise to ensure your success. Visit PortlandNursery.com for a list of classes and special events. Portland Nursery, helping make your backyard your favorite destination at 50th and Stark and 90th and Division. Since 1926, the Bonite Company has worked with homeowners to make their homes and gardens beautiful. If you have a garden problem, Bonide has the answer. Get a jump on this year's pest problems with Bonide's All Season Oil Spray. All Season Oil Spray smothers insect eggs on your fruit and shade trees, shrubs, roses, and ornamental plants, preventing problems before they start. Visit Bonide.com to find a local retailer and to download your free Bonide Problem Solver app for your iPhone or Droid. For over 75 years, Collier Arbor Care has provided tree, shrub, and lawn care services to the Portland metro area. From large tree to small shrub pruning, tree removal and stump grinding, we can handle all your tree care needs. Our arborists diagnose and treat your toughest insect and disease problems. We also have organic solutions for growing and maintaining healthy lawns, as well as organic nutrition for your trees and shrubs. Call your Arbor Care, environmentally friendly since 1937. When you go into a standard TV and appliance store, you get to actually interact with the appliances, how a kitchen is set up. They can walk in the store, they can feel it, they can touch it, they can use it, they see how it works. And really experience what it was, is like to own that appliance. It's just such an amazing tool that works for us every single time. Since 1947, we set the standard. Standard TV and appliance. As gardeners, I think we love to garden all year long. And what about a greenhouse to help you do that? I'm with Pat from Solar Gem Greenhouses. Hey, How you Judy, doing? Good to see you again. And really, this would be like a dream come true in anyone's yard. So why would I want a Solar Gem greenhouse over maybe a different one, a, a do-it-yourselfer? Well, you know, there is a, a sea of backyard greenhouses out there. But 95, 98% of the ones that you will find are the build-it-yourself, do-it-yourself, assemble-it-yourself kind of greenhouses. And when you have a greenhouse that has to be assembled, that has to be put together, first of all, not everybody wants to do that. Not oh, everybody, of course. yeah, not everybody's a do-it-yourself and wants to spend 50 or 60 hours trying to do that. But that can rob you of an ability that a solar gem gives you, and that's the ability to grow year-round in our climate in the Pacific Northwest. When you have things that are put together, you have gaps, you have seams, you have joints. This is where cold air can readily come in, sure. and the warm air you're desperate to keep in it gets out, and that robs you of an ability to really garden year-round, but a solar gym is designed for that. It really is a cold weather champ. So it would come just like this to my home? Yes, exactly, you know, and that's the beauty of it. This is one eighth inch rigid fiberglass, and we put a marine grade gel coat uh, over it. You can see my hand wow. through it. The sun goes through, but the weather doesn't. Uh -huh. So it's got a marine grade gel coat on it that is UV stabilized, so it's not going to deteriorate over the years. And importantly, we're so confident that this greenhouse is going to do wonders for you for years. We give it a limited lifetime warranty. Wow. As long as you own a Solar Gem greenhouse, we're going to stand behind it. Nobody else does that anywhere. Ah, and so I love the low maintenance of it, the low setup maintenance right. of it. And so what about a flooring? Oh, good point. That's a great point. You know, with a Solar Gem, you don't have to have a concrete slab, ah. a wood deck, or some kind of special footer. 
but your build-it-yourself, do-it-yourself, wood, plastic, glass greenhouses always require something along that line. You don't need that here. This sits right in your backyard just like you see it. Uh, in places where it's extraordinarily cold and snowy, it's great for wind load, it's great for snow load, it's a strong, strong structure. We call this the Gothic arch design. Mm. Uh, and it's just designed to take everything that Mother Nature can throw at it and shrug it off. We've got these as far north as Alaska, oh. all the way down to the Mexican border. So everything Mother Nature can give it, <laughs> it can take it. Yeah, and I love that it has a roof vent and also a back vent. Yes. Yes, I'm, really glad you I'm glad you pointed that out. These all come, every Solar Gem greenhouse comes with at least one, maybe two, depending on the size, of an automatic overhead vent. It opens and closes all by itself by the magic of a natural wax ah. that's inside that tube. When it, when it heats up, it expands, and the expansion pushes the, uh, the vent open, and when it cools down, it closes. So you get good cross ventilation in the warmer months and the convection of hot air out. Ah, neat. And I see that there's benches in here, and so that's also a kit or does that come yeah the, yeah these these are pre-made at our factory when our factory is in Tacoma Washington oh, wow. as you well uh -huh, know yes. but these are cedar wood benches that we make pre-built in our factory that uh, a lot of our gardeners absolutely love we've got doubles with an upper and a lower shelf and a single with upper but no lower shelf a potting tray a watering nice. tray and strawberry trough you don't ha look this is all about garden harvest and enjoy not build maintain and repair right this is why solar gym has become so popular ah, nice and there's other sizes I would think yeah you're right this is the small uh, it, we, we, we like to travel around when we do shows sure. with the small it's easy all of our greenhouses are going to be eight feet in width they only are going to differ in depth okay so this one right here is seven and a half feet long the medium is 12 feet long the large is double this size 15 oh, feet wow. long but we do have a real small one for people with an urban backyard nice. don't have much of a footprint and it's only four feet seven in depth ah, okay. so we kind of have one that's going to fit everybody's needs uh, uh, their, their, I guess, their motivations, their sure. gardening skills, and, and, and their footprint in their backyard. Ah. So if we want to see them, there's two places in the area. Yeah, yeah, we have two dealers in uh, in the in the broadcast area. Uh, one right here in Portland would be um, Little Baja, and they're on Burnside, okay. where we we visited with you last fall. Uh, they're a great place to go to see a solar gem, and if you'd like to buy one, to purchase one. If you're in southern Washington, say Vancouver or Woodland, go visit our dealer called Sugawa Nursery. Right. Both of them oh, can take place. care of you. But if you're in neither of those particular locales, feel free to call us directly at the factory uh, at our 800 number or go to solargemgreenhouses.com and we'll be happy to take care of whatever your questions you have or if you'd like to order one. Ah, that's great. You know, everybody would love these in their yard. You can extend your season all year long. So go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website. Thanks so much, Pat. Thanks, Judy. We wanted to give a sincere, huge thank you to Wooden Shoe Tulip Farm for naming a tulip after garden time. And don't forget about the Subaru tree planting event that's happening the whole month of March. So for information on how you can purchase this tulip or for more information on the tree giveaway at Subaru, and if you want to find out more about what you saw today on the show, you can always go to gardentime.tv. William and I thank you for watching and we'll see you next week here on Garden Time. If you build it, build it right, build it to last, don't just build it for yourself, build it for the next generation, build it with par lumber, and keep building the great Northwest. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.